If wizards forced you to secretly join a magic school to save your family, what would you do? You'll have to beat the world's best magic users in order to climb up the ranks and become the school's divine visionary. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the Eastern Magic Academy in Martial Magic and Muscles. This freak of nature will be forced to go undercover and battle terrifying wizards. In a world ruled by magical users, Mash here is different. Born with no power, no magic, and a little bit dumb, he's grown up in a forest with his dad and has been forced to train and prepare for when the world finally finds out about his terrifying secret. One day, Mash's dad, Regro, steps out of the house and warns Mash not to go into town under any circumstances. And Mash listens to him, but as soon as he gets hungry, he conveniently forgets about his dad's orders and heads into town for lunch, a town that he's never been to before. And as he walks through town, nothing happens. Everything's fine until he tries to order some food. And that that's when people start to notice his unmarked face. Everybody knows who he is. He's something rare, a non-magic user, and he continues to gather attention. And that's when he bumps into this police officer, and he's drunk on the job. This officer creates a mess, and Mash accidentally rips his shirt off, causing even more trouble. And that's when another officer arrives, a superior named Brad, and he's the police chief. He looks at Mash dead in the face and realizes what he's looking at. But just then, a gust of wind blasts right past them, and Mash is taken away by his dad. But oh, it's too late. Realizing that the kid is a freak, Brad sends a magical bird to track them down deep into the forest as Mash and his dad retreat back into the woods. And once they get back home, the dad is furious at Mash. But then he remembers that his son is not exactly the brightest tool in the shed and quickly forgives him. And that's when Mash then hands him some cream puffs. Oh, that's nice. And he goes out to train again for the fourth time today as punishment. And that's when the magical police bust down the door and get into the house. Holding Mash's dad hostage, they demand to know where the non-magic user is. And cue ball daddy keeps his mouth shut, forcing the police to do what they do best. Commit magical police brutality. Meanwhile, Mash finishes his workout in five minutes because he's so freaking good at working out and heads back home to eat more cream puffs. But that's when he hears someone inside and realizes that they're beating up his sweet old dad. Oh boy, this is crazy for them. It's gonna be way fun for us. Because look, if I was Mash, I'm gonna rely on my tight throbbing muscle to beat these pretty boy wizards down. Let me explain. The dad should have known that Mash wasn't exactly the brightest pork in the ramen bowl since he raised this kid for like two decades. And he should have put some sort of security measure in place. Like, oh, I don't know, maybe have a second house that you can hide in. Or maybe get a, oh, I don't know, a better disguise for Mash. Like, it's not that hard. I mean, come on guys, not having magic in this world is a huge deal. And Pop should have assumed that one day, one day his teenager would not listen to him. He was so dumb throughout the whole thing. And at this point as MASH, we have very few options. If the cops catch us, they're gonna try to kill us. That means we need to think fast. Now look, there's three viewpoints that I can see when looking at this house. There's the windows and also the big freaking hole that they blew in, which means I'm gonna take a sneaky peek and look through these different vantage points to see how many we're up against. Then I'm gonna head back to my little gym, pick up a fully loaded up barbell and come back there and use that as a weapon. Because yeah, while we're up against terrifying magic, we are ripped to shreds. We just did 10 billion Zercher Squatch, which is like one of the most badass exercises that you can do in a hardcore gym. And we're up against wizards, and usually wizards are typically not known for being exactly the most physically fit, which means we can very easily physically overpower them. Waiting outside of the house, I'm gonna first throw a rock into the bushes to make a noise, and get either one or two of the wizards to come out. Then I'm gonna casually toss one or two of these 45 pound weights right at them, because it's clear that they're part of the D-Y-E-L. Do you even lift club? Right after, I'm gonna blast through the front door and simultaneously throw the rest of my weights and barbell at Blondie over there, disarming him before punching in his throat and smacking him in the head. While this move may seem simple, it's actually way more advanced because most people here are wizards and can do everything with their magic, and it's likely that none of them have ever learned to handle any sort of physical trauma, but we grew up doing that our entire life through training. Back inside, Police Chief Brad tells the dad that this world is only meant for pure blood magic users, and anybody who cannot to use magic doesn't deserve to live. They don't have the right. And that's when Mash bursts in and beats these cops down in seconds, slapping this one dude in epic fashion and it's freaking hilarious. And then he faces off against Brad, channeling his magic. 
and the guy fires off a beam of lethal energy. And his father yells out in horror as the house blows up, but then the smoke disappears and everybody stands in shock, seeing Mash completely unharmed. Brad then realizes that this kid pimp slapped his spell like it was nothing, and he quickly amps up his powers more and fires his most lethal spell. But then Mash just pfft, slaps it away again, deflecting the rest of all of the spells. And then he grabs his dad's nearby wand and tells his dad that, hey, I'm gonna borrow this. And Brad thinks, what? This guy can use magic after all? Because Marshall then proceeds to launch this wand right at Brad like a major league baseball player, firing it with blazing speed, injuring him and shocking him and his dad. Because even his old bald dad had no idea at Mash's true powers. He's swole. Out of moves, Brad gives up, but then has an idea. And he offers Mash a new deal to free him and his dad, and tells him that there is an annual competition starting soon, where the best magic students enroll in magic school, and all will compete for the grand prize. To become the city's new divine visionary. If Mash wins the title, it means that God has accepted him, and this means that society will be forced to accept him as well. However, in order to join, he will have to go undercover. With the stakes high, Mash accepts the terrifying deal. The next day, the city's most powerful kids show up to the school, Easton Magic Academy, for the entrance exam, including Mash. All the while, his pops and Brad hide in the back in epic style, because nobody can clearly see these two adult men hiding in plain sight. They're that good. And just then, this famous wizard Claude shows up and gives them their first test. They must use their magic to stop the letters on the page from moving and reveal the questions. The terrified students then get to work, and Mash politely tells the letters to stop moving, but nothing happens. And then he gets annoyed and asks more politely. Stop moving. And it works. The terrified letters freeze into place, allowing him to answer the questions. And somehow he finds out all sorts of creative, muscle-bound ways to pass the rest of the tests, secretly using his strength and power instead of magic, and fools all of the other kids and teachers. But he's finding that the tests keep getting harder and harder. And the final test arrives. The students are asked to solve this unsolvable maze in 30 minutes. If they don't die inside from all of the monsters, now all alone, Mash accidentally runs into this girl, Lemon Irving. Scared, she asks Mash if she can tag along with him, and it's a little strange, but hey, he's jacked, so he accepts. Going through the maze, she consistently falls into every single freaking trap. She's pretty pathetic. And Mash, not caring about her at all, tries to leave, but that's when she uses her magic to turn on him, trapping him. She tells him that she was actually sent to meet him and prevent him from passing the test. But Mash easily breaks out of her spell with his buff strength, shocking her, and says that he must go, leaving her. And that's when a huge magical monster appears in front of Lemon. She tries to defend herself, but her wand gets smacked out of her hand, forcing her to stare helplessly and get ready for her brutal and well-deserved death. But that's when Mash suddenly returns and casually defeats this monster in one second. Confused, Lemon asks him why he saved her, and he tells her that he felt sorry for her, and can tell that she really is nice deep down. With the timer almost up, Mash breaks through the rest of the maze walls, taking Lemon with him, and the two amazingly pass the test. Shocked at his methods, the rest of the students think Mash cheated and demanded he gets kicked out. But that's when Lemon then reveals that Professor Claude told her that he'd fail her if she didn't get in. Mash's way. Coming from a poor family, Lemon says she was forced to make lemonade out of the deal and accept his offer. And then this douchey professor has then had enough. It gets ready to expel the two, but Mash quickly breaks his wand in a second, terrifying everybody here. He's doing things that should not be possible. And that's when the school's headmaster shows up. Headmaster Wahlberg. And he tells everyone that he will take over the rest of the tests from now on and will conduct personal interviews. He then takes Mash with him up to his office here. The headmaster then tells tells Mash that he doesn't think before he acts, and that one day he will face monsters that are more powerful than him. And to get his point across, the headmaster uses magic to create a final test for Mash. He tells him that this doll now has the soul of his father inside of it, and he must try to save him. Acting quick, Mash tries to destroy the device with his terrifying strength, but he can't, and the headmaster knows it. He then puts his hands together under the spike and tries to prevent the spike from impaling the doll, and Mash tells the headmaster that this
this is a test, isn't it? Who can last longer? His strength or the headmaster's magic? Who has the better endurance? Impressed. The headmaster tells him that magic must be used to protect the weak and regulate the strong, at least from what he's seen. He thinks Mash is capable of becoming a great wizard. He then asks Mash a final question of how what would happen if he actually tried to defeat him in actual combat. And Mash tells him honestly that if they did really fight, he would just kick the living shit out of him. Headmaster Wahlberg chuckles and welcomes him to Easton Magic Academy. Later, he meets up with his new roommate, this kid called Finn. Mash introduces himself and each of his well-developed muscles. And every single one of them have their own names, freaking Finn out. And it's here that Mash finds out how to achieve his goal that will save him and his dad from certain death. In order to become a divine visionary, students will be evaluated on how they perform at school, and based on this, they will be given coins of gold, silver, or bronze. And they must gather as many coins as possible. Mash then thanks him and offers him his most prized possession, a cream puff. How nice. Later, all the kids head into this hall to find out which of the three great wizard houses they will be assigned to by this magical beast. The house of Adler, full of courage and conviction. The house of Orca, wisdom and willingness. And the house of Lang, ability and ambition. And this skeleton horse thing is able to read minds and put the right person with the right house. But when it reads Mash's mind, it panics, because the only freaking thing that is in Mash's head right now is glorious, glorious cream puffs, and nothing freaking else. Getting confused, it tries to explain away why Mash is thinking of cream puffs and says that he is somebody that is harboring kindness within strength, and uses this incredible leap of logic, and it assigns him to the Adler house. Oh, Mash could have had such an easier time of this. Look, this is really annoying. If I was Mash, I would have prepared way earlier, because now everybody is going to view us as a punching bag as they servant, someone who can be told what to do and we just will always say yes, that's a problem. This is another example of how Mash's daddy and lazy capo over there didn't really help Mash at all in any sort of way because it's clear that none of them ever bothered to research what type of activities or events would take place at the school. I mean, <laughs> come on, this thing happens every freaking year. All these kids are trying to become a divine visionary. We could have figured out the school's itinerary, that shouldn't have been that hard. Plus, blonde guy being a chief of police means that, oh, I don't know, maybe he has some connections that he could have used to figure some stuff out and make Mash's life easier or trying to, I don't know, maybe hide the fact that he doesn't have magic, this comp guy would have had access to thousands of school records or files to help MASH better prepare. If I was them, I would have helped MASH prepare and trying to get into a particular house. Because, oh, I don't know, maybe House Lang, they're known for winning. Because if we get into a house with power like them, it's going to give MASH way more opportunities than if he tried to do anything himself. That's part of the reason why people go to expensive schools. Yes, it's expensive, but really at the end of the day, it's about who you know and the connections that you make. Oh yes, everyone in House Lang probably is really snooty as all get out it doesn't matter we can lay low but eventually we will take over and be right at the top and all along everything will be easier for us sometime later mash heads to his next class where the kids can finally learn how to fly using his two brain cells of intelligence he knows that he has no powers but he quickly thinks fast and pretends to fly on it grabbing his broom he throws it into the air like a dart and leaps and catches up with it mid flight and rides the momentum of it past the finish line acing the test and keeping his true secret safe. The teachers and students get really impressed. Everybody except Mash's roommate, Finn, who swears he saw Mash use no magic at all. And just then, this school bully, Lloyd Cavill, congratulates Mash and asks to be his friend. And the other students around him get nervous, not caring or thinking about anything at all. Mash agrees to be his friend. After class, he finds out from Finn that Lloyd is actually a terrible human being and is the son of a high-ranking member of the Bureau of Magic. And his family is tight with the school vice principal. And if they make him mad, he would be able to get any student expelled. The next day, Mash runs into Lloyd, beating Finn up. And Finn tells him to not interfere. But Mash, his chiseled self, walks up to Lloyd and smashes his face in and tells him to apologize to his friend now. But just then, Vice Principal Farman shows up and tells Mash that he is in serious trouble. You can't do that. So what does Mash do? He kicks this guy's face in, breaks his wand, and buries him alive in horror. And he tells the Vice Principal that he can expel him anytime. But Mash will continue to bury him every single time. 
and nothing will stop it from happening. Later, he gets called into the headmaster's office, and he tells Mash that because of what happened, the Bureau of Magic wants Mash expelled, and that Mash must take things seriously. Because the Bureau is the most powerful force in the country, and they are run by divine visionaries and should not be messed with. But the headmaster then reveals to Mash that he knows Mash used his powers to help the weak. And this is why he became the headmaster of this school. He tells him that he hopes Mash can become a divine visionary someday. But Mash tells him that it's but inevitable. Mash then quickly becomes famous for defeating one of the school bullies and soon gets asked to represent his house in a discount Quidditch match. And the guy's name who asked him is Tom. He's super intense and really annoying and even more single-minded than Mash is. But even then, Mash agrees to join as long as Tom will leave him alone. The next day, the match begins, but Adler house quickly falls behind. The opposing team, the Lang House, absolutely beats down on the Adler House, and Mash sees Tom get injured on purpose by one of their douchey opponents. Annoyed at the injustice, Mash gets on the broom and begins flying? What am I looking at? Everybody sees him kicking his legs at supersonic speed for some reason, and he hovers in the air. Using his superb strength and speed, he throws the game ball through the goal and uses his terrifyingly strong fingers to curve the ball and make it return to him like a boomerang. And he does this again and again and again and again and again and again countless times in seconds and quickly scores enough goals winning the match and he wins his first silver coin and he gets put into the school newspaper not realizing that now he's being targeted by this guy Later, Mash gets approached in class by this guy named Lance. But he notices that this student is different, and he has two marks on his face. He then asks Mash to play a game with him. Opening up this magic bottle, he quickly traps his friends inside, and Mash gets ready for combat as Lance teleports them to this field. He tells Mash that in this school, no one can use their magic to harm each other unless they make it an official wizard duel by wagering their coins. He knows that Mash wants to become the next divine visionary and says that that there can only be one. He offers him a duel. The winner gets the other's coin. He also reveals that he is a double-line magic user. These guys are way more powerful and rarer than single-line users, and they are already considered gods among men. He criticizes Mash and tells him that he's too soft as a person, and that he must be ruthless if he wants to win. Mash wastes no time and tries to catch Lance off guard, but he easily stops him with a gravity spell. Pushed into the ground, Mash stabs his arm into the dirt and pulls out the roots from under Lance, setting him off balance. Mash finds out that Lance also wants to become a divine visionary, to become powerful enough to save his sick sister. She is sick with a disease that will soon get rid of her magical powers, and if this happens, she will be forced to be executed. He tells Mash he's sorry for what he's about to do, and tries to throw Mash's trapped friends off of the cliff. But suddenly, Mash starts acting strange and bends over, and he announces that he will now use his hamstring magic to save his friends. Getting into a sprinter's pose, he ties up his thick hammies, and and shoots past land saving his friends and coming back up from the cliff in an instant, terrifying Lance to his core. He thinks Mash must be using some type of physical enhancement magic, and he has no idea that Mash is basically the physical embodiment of One Punch Man in this universe. Mash tells him that he doesn't think Lance is a bad guy and wants to be friends. Stunned at his kindness, Lance anime changes his mind and offers Mash one of his silver coins as a sign of friendship. A few days later, Mash's wizard house gets set to face off against House Lang again in a challenge more horrifying than the last. Their task, exterminate these forest scorpions and retrieve the silver or bronze stones on their forehead. Whoever gets the most will get an additional silver coin. Mash's group gets ready for a bloodthirsty battle. But then this new kid bumps into Mash and sucker punches him to the floor. He tries to go after him again, but Lance stops him and tells him that the kid is named Silva. And unlike the other bullies, he's a legit psycho. He's killed students and even teaches before, but he's never been expelled because of his talent, apparently. And that boys will be boys. So weird. The group then decides to split into groups. Lance and Mash will head into the dark forest together. But Mash accidentally zones out for one second and ends up getting lost. Then he bumps into this red-haired kid named Dot. And suddenly they hear a horrifying scream nearby and find a helpless girl about to get killed by this student. They decide to go rescue her and that is their biggest mistake. Dot quickly takes this kid out and this girl quickly falls for him instantly. Uh -huh, this seems a little suspicious. 
Jonas, not a ladies man at all. Dot quickly falls in love with her in seconds, not realizing that she is actually using a love spell on him. With Dot under her spell, this girl then tries to secretly use her powers on MASH, but she realizes that he doesn't really have a brain for her to take control of, and means that her powers are useless against him. Realizing that she can't beat him, she comes clean and tells them that a kid named Silva actually threatened her unless she tried to stop House Adler during this competition. But that's when Silva suddenly shows up, and Dot here vows to become the white knight in shining armor that he knows he can be, and finally he will be a true ladies man. He threatens Silva and shoots his magic spell at him, and the girl and Mash watch while eating cream puffs. But that's when Dot begins to realize that he's just made a terrible mistake, sensing that Silva's powers are on a whole other level. He quickly gets injured badly. He's so stupid. This Dot, look, if I was him, I would win this match by playing dirty, by becoming this psycho overpowered wizard's little servant. Let me explain. Dot here is a first year student off duty simp, hardcore, and has magic that involves critting exploding fireballs. Very useful, but you a problem. He's up against resident psycho Silva, who is a second year student and whose magic allows him to control masses of iron. But here's the thing, Dodd only used his most obvious spells, machine gun explosion against him. And on top of that, he already knew that Silva was a double line magic user, which means that it should have been obvious that the only way to take this guy down was by doing a surprise attack. Don't attack him front on. Look, there is a slight delay between the moment a magic user draws their wand and the moment they aim and cast their spell. The amount of time it takes for this to happen is maybe one to two seconds max. That is is useful. If we try to draw Silva in closer, where we could be within striking distance, we would be able to disarm his wand and or disarm his face with our fist. Fight dirty! It works. Getting bored. Silva proposes a new challenge to both Mash and Dot. They must endure five hits from each of his magic, and if they can survive, he'll leave this girl alone. And he will even bet one silver coin. Dot agrees, but offers to take on Mash's hits too, since he's the one who got them into this. Silva smiles and accepts. He shoots a new spell at Dot, and he takes it. He trembles and he coughs up blood. Hit after hit, Dot takes them all and still remains standing. Impressed, Silver offers him one last hit, but this time makes the attack twice as deadly. And this time it works. Dot now collapses to the floor and he yells at Mash and the girl to run. But that's when he finds out that this sweet girl is actually working with Silva. She goes to him and tells Dot that she hates white knights like him and Dot realizes that he sacrificed himself for nothing. Silva laughs as he tries to kill Dot for real. But that's when Mash finally intercepts the magic and switches to triceps magic and ballista knuckle magic and he shoots right at Silva, destroying his attacks and blowing him back, making this bully cough up blood. And that's when a huge scorpion also shows up with a huge star-shaped stone on its forehead. It gets ready to unleash its horrors onto the group, but Mash tells him that hey, I'm busy, and pimp slaps him into the stratosphere, and the stone from its forehead lands on the floor. Seeing Silva badly injured, Mash offers a truce since he feels bad for him. Out of options, this girl also gives up and starts crying and Mash comes over to hug her and she thinks that haha he's finally fallen for her charms but that's when he breaks her back and says that he believes in treating everybody equally when it comes to ass kicking. After the competition, Mash meets back up with his group, Lance, Finn, and Lemon, and they find out that he beat Silva and the Scorpion, earning him two silver coins. Dot then comes over and thanks him for teaming up. Lance then interrupts them with some horrifying news. He's overheard in the school that their house, Adler, is being targeted by their rivals, the House of Lang, and they've begun hunting for coins and have started to target their house. And this is likely why Silva picked a fight with Mash in the first place. Lance warns them that Lang House is made up of snooty rich elite folks who value birthright and bloodline over anything else, and will do anything to prevent nobodies like them from becoming divine visionaries and getting into the Bureau of Magic. A war has now started for coins against House Lang's elite squad, known as the Magnia Lupus, consisting of a group of seven students. Suddenly, Mash's five silver coins begin to merge and become one gold coin, making Mash now one of their most valuable people in the whole school. Lance tells him because of this, he should stay away from their rival house as often as he can, and shouldn't roam the hallways alone anymore. But later, what does he do? Mash totally forgets what Lance said and somehow ends up lost in the school. Meanwhile, in the headquarters of Magnia Lupus, the leader of the group, Abel here, gives some shit to Silver for losing to House and turns him into a horrifying doll as punishment. Abel then puts Silva on his wall full of dolls and announces that this year's divine visionaries must be from their house only. And suddenly, the loudest door creak is heard and 
everybody here turns to see Mash enter, unaware that he just entered the house of his worst enemy. Abel smiles and says he knows who Mash is and tells him that he's too weak to become a divine visionary because he cares too much for people. Their kind must be ruthless and aspire to rule the world fully because society has become weak. And Abel is about to rattle on, but then he can tell that Mash is completely lost, so he gives up and tells him to go. Only if he hands over his valuable gold coin. But Mash refuses. This angers Abel and immediately sends over his puppet to attack him, grabbing Mash's coin and gives it back to Abel. But Mash hits the puppet down and sees it turn back into Silva. Seeing him injured, Mash tells Abel that he must go to help Silva instead. And these two quickly leave the headquarters and Abel lets them go. He's got the coin that he wanted anyways, but then he realizes that he's not holding on to a coin, but a button. And he realizes that he's somehow been tricked. And this pink haired girl realizes what she really saw. Later, Silva wakes up and sees Mash working out at developing his abs and realizes that he saved him. And he ends up liking Mash and decides not to be a douchebag anymore, going to show you that muscles do change a person. Mash then heads back to his dorm. There, he whips out a cream puff while Lance then reveals to them a crazy plan to beat their rival house. He says that House Lang has most of the gold coins, while their house only has one gold coin. And he says that while they only have one that belongs to Mash, House Lang has way more. And he's found out that since the start of this year, House Lang has started stealing all of the other house's coins illegally. And at this rate, they will win the competition. All of the Adler wizards strong enough to put a stop to this are away on off-campus internships. And Orca House are a bunch of nerds that just study and don't really care about the competition. And this means that it's up to these guys to stop the evil wizard house. But last minute, Mash finds out that the headmaster was forced to give him some punishment for beating up that vice principal earlier. And his punishment is that he has to clean this owl nest first. And oh my gosh, they're so cute! Lance catches up with him and updates him on their plan to win the competition. He says that he's just found out that men from House Lang will likely try to take Mash's gold coin soon. And that's why he's here to protect him because shit's about to go down. But suddenly Mash disappears into a magic puddle of water and these flesh-eating shuriken dashes past Lance's face, almost killing him. Mash yells that he can't swim and struggles for his life as these two House Lang members enter. Sixth Fang, Olore Andrew, and Seventh Fang, and Sir Shinri, pissed off. They say they're here for blood and offer these two an official duel for their gold coins. Sixth Fang then turns into this horrifying shark-human hybrid and jumps into the magical water to kill Mash, leaving Lance to face off against Seventh Fang. About to use his gravity magic, Lance realizes that he can't, otherwise he'll kill all of the cute owls, and he can't do that because his sister loves owls. Oh, that's annoying. So he takes a brutal beating instead, while he lures these cute fluffy little turd blossoms away from the kill zone, and he waits for his opening to strike. All right, now things are getting a little bit more serious. We're up against one of the most deadly wizards here in terms of students. If I was Lance, I would kill this wizard by killing these cute animals here and by rupturing this guy's orbital globe. Let me explain. It's noted that all the wizards here on average have at least one special ability which they use repeatedly makes them very predictable. It's so stupid. And this includes also these two baddies. While Mash somehow will come out on top, this means that while we're up against someone who is strong, they seem to rely on only predictable ranged magic through this only one source, this shuriken. This guy, however, has the power to control freaking gravity. That's amazing. Which means our attacks can go on a wide scale. But right now we're surrounded by these cute little fluffy creatures. They're adorable and also smelly probably because we're surrounded by bird poop like all wizards. If you had the power to move the TV remote closer to you without moving, you would. And this means that wizards are likely lazy and likely in no way would they expect up close and personal encounters. Once we get to close range, I would take my wand and shove it right up this guy's nose, lodging it directly to where the nasal cartilage is. I would then violently rip it towards us and upward, instantly breaking part of the nasal cavity, which would really make it hard for this guy to breathe, instantly making him blind and also ruin whatever potential future this kid had in his life. Once the baby owls are finally clear, Lance activates his magic and kicks this guy's ass. Meanwhile, deep in the magical sea field, Sixth Fang announces that Mash is dead, but that's when he sees something shoot past him with terrifying speed. He realizes it's Mash, and Mash stops and tells him that he just learned how to swim in the past five minutes and thanks him for helping him. Panicking, Shark Man turns into Sea Shark Evolution and lunges at Mash to bite his head off, but he easily gets destroyed by Mash's sick breaststroke. Beating this baddie in five anime minutes, and House Adler ends up winning the duel and collects their second gold coin. And they think, hey, it's over, and they get ready to head home. But that was their biggest mistake. 
the barn door is then blast open, and this mysterious masked man appears, saying he's only here to retrieve his team members from House Lang. Wasting no time, Lance tries to attack this guy, but he easily dodges his attack like it's nothing. Mash has a turn, but easily gets dodged, and he just did something that no other wizard against Mash has ever done before. The masked man then reveals that while he's here to rescue his teammates, he also wanted to get a glimpse of their powers and thanks them, and he tells them that he'll be meeting them again soon, and he disappears and leaves these two more nervous than ever. Later, Lance comes up with a plan to beat House Lang. The school hides the living areas of each of the houses in order to keep all of the students safe, but if they can figure out where House Lang is, they can try to steal their coins. And all the while, Mash is pounding down some tasty, tasty cream puffs. He hands Mash a sick Adler house robe, and then they find out that their friend Tom has just been admitted to the doctor. He tells them the strangest thing has happened. Last night, he had a dream. He was trapped in a box, and when he woke up, he couldn't use magic anymore. And he's not the only one. The doctors do not know what's wrong. Other students are also suffering the same fate. Lemon then realizes that all of this happened when the headmaster had to travel to the Bureau of Magic, leaving the school vulnerable. With no time to lose, they agree to meet back up that same night to begin looking for House Lang. But then they notice that Lemon hasn't shown up. Agreeing to go on without her, they suddenly notice who they think is Lemon walking around these empty halls. But something is wrong. And then she turns around, but sees no one, because all of them are hiding behind this corner. Realizing that someone has put a terrifying spell on her, they secretly follow her down this corner, and she disappears. Sensing a secret door on the floor, Mash breaks through it using simple physics and extreme strength, and they head down below. Following this light down the hall, they enter into an ancient wizard arena. Suddenly, this red-haired kid bodyguard appears and tells them Third Fang sent him to kill any intruders that try and enter, and he's not part of their group. Knowing he's about to throw it down, he challenges them to a death match using their gold coins, and Dot then steps up and offers to take one for the team again. Meanwhile, the headmaster now at the Bureau of Magic gets told why he's been called. Six of Death Row's most notorious inmates have escaped from Hecatrice, and they were assisted by Innocent Zero, meaning no one is safe, including all of the students back of the school. Back at the school, Dot tries to fight this kid, but quickly realizes that he's no match, because this wizard can't be killed. And just then, the floor breaks apart, and everybody falls down. Getting separated, this glasses guy shows up in front of Lance and the rest, and they're forced to face off against the first-year double-line students, and Lance faces off against the third fang. Meanwhile, Mash goes off to try and find his friends, but runs into the same masked wizard from earlier, and he introduces himself as Magia Lupus Abyss Razor, and tells tells Mash that he's in trouble, because he knows about his deepest secret. Mash doesn't have any powers, and he knows it. Mash tries to play it off, but Abyss tells him that he's just like him, someone hated by this world, and he takes out his sword and forces Mash to prepare for a death match. Back in the other arena, Wirith duels with Lance, and is impressed with his powers, and he offers him a chance to join House Lang, and tells him that in order to excel in life, he must surround himself with powerful people, in order to not end up like his loser friends. But Lance refuses, pissing Wirith off. He then takes out a concentrated magical essence from his pocket, and is told that this potion is made from the powers of other students that only his house has access to. Drinking it, he gets roided up, and his powers augment, causing a more powerful spell, and a terrifying monster manifests right in front of him, and Wirith reveals that second death magic is different than single-line magic users, and only double-line magic users can use this kind of magic. Knowing he won't survive, Lance reveals that he also has access to second death magic, and whips out his upgraded spell, creating these pillars in front of the monster, giving off a strong gravitational pull towards them. The pulls quickly rip the monster apart in all directions, destroying this guy's ego in exactly 10 seconds. It's awesome. After, Lance feels bad for him and tells him that he respects the effort he put into his magic and leaves him. Back at Mash, they wait for him to change into his fighting costume, and Mash attacks Abyss, but finds out that this wizard can use a new type of magic and easily overpowers Mash. Abyss tells him that Mash is similar to him and reveals that he's holding Lemon hostage. In 30 minutes, this device will drain Lemon of her powers, unless they can stop him. Mash tries to beat him, but gets beaten to hell. Abyss continues to use his force arrow magic and cuts him a thousand times in seconds, and stabs Mash in the stomach. But that's when Mash thinks fast and flexes his muscles, trapping the sword within him, and headbutts Abyss, destroying his mask. And that's when he sees his red eye, and he doesn't know what it means. Ashamed, Abyss reveals that he has the evil eye of the devil, and anybody who looks at it gets their magic powers temporarily disabled. Because of his powers growing up, nobody ever wanted to be his friend, and his parents tried to kill him. Abyss then unleashes accelerated second death, and creates this magic force field around them, trapping Mash in place, as Abyss quickly gives him more cuts. And he tells Mash that this force field decreases the speed of everyone else in it, and grants the speed to him. And he gets ready to deliver the final lethal attack to Mash. But Mash at the last minute smashes the floor, forcing a 
best to come closer to attack him as Mash traps his foot and he deploys full muscles magic. Hurricane Rush, that sounds epic, and smashes Abyss through the roof and he activates the rest of his magical muscles, forearm, quadriceps, pectorals, iliopsoas, and then he uses his girthy erector spinae to finish the job. Defeated, Abyss gets sad and tells him that he should never have been born, but the leader of Magnia Lupus, Abel, needed him, and now no one needs him anymore. Feeling bad, Mash offers him friendship. Abyss thanks him and tells him that if he goes down any further, Abel will kill him. But Mash says he must, because that Abel needs a good ass kicking. And he bids Abyss farewell, and tells him that they should eat cream puffs together next time. Nearby, Finn and Dot get ready to take on these lupus baddies. Love cute. And fourth fang, Milo genius. But Milo here then leaves these two for love to handle. But this girl is a rather super weirdo, and suddenly asks them if they think she's cute. Confused, Finn tells her to chill out since they just met. But Dot confesses to Finn that he kind of likes her weirdness. However, he says that since he's already has a fiance, who he also barely knows, and he remains loyal to her. And this makes Love angry, and she gets ready to kill these two right here. Okay, this is crazy, because we're up against a certified freak, though maybe I let her step on us in order to survive. Let me explain. Love Cute here is one of the most powerful wizards and part of the best house in this school, and she's a total nutcase, and basically she can create magical tornadoes. That's a problem. However, it's obvious that everybody here is trying to become a divine visionary, and that's why if I was them, I would have tried to study up on all of the double line users because that makes sense because there's not many of them they're super rare they're a statistical rarity which means it's not that hard to memorize who they are what their powers are and possibly what are their weaknesses this girl wanted us to like her so freaking bad and that means if she wants our approval she might have to go through some hoops in order to get it we could manipulate her which probably won't even be that hard and i'll tell her the only way for us to be together and for her to love us would be for her to impress us by providing us with favors not that kind of favor like stepping on us lady demetrius goose style and telling us we're worthless we just lie down in the fetal position the moment she walks over and gets real close to us we're gonna do a leg sweep knock her down to the ground and bop her in the head a few times to knock her out and call it a day love shoots a devastating spell at them and dot quickly counters with an exploding spell love angrily yells that girls are princesses and everybody must live to serve and love them dot tries to reach for her wand but she sees him coming and beats his face telling them that milo's powers allow him to turn a specified target into stone it means that any person who opened the secret door into this floor will soon turn into stone mash horrified she tells them they have 30 minutes to save mash she creates a new spell and traps dot inside about to die dot loses consciousness and this causes him to turn into this new wizard creature surprised love tries to kill him but realizes that his power level has now doubled and notices what's on his forehead named the warding cross she realizes that dot is a part of a rare group of wizards known as battle demons who unleash their magic power when their emotions cross a certain threshold dot fires off machine gun magic at love but misses her on purpose telling her that he doesn't like to hit girls and that she should leave now scared at his new powers she thanks him and just then this stone monster appears from nowhere and tries to eat finn dot thinks fast and quickly protects him but gets badly injured just as milo comes back milo gets ready to kill them but then gets stabbed by something and that's when a divine visionary shows up named ray ames ray easily defeats milo and beats the shit out of him telling finn and dot to leave and dot finds out that this guy is Finn's older brother. Getting valuable information out of Milo, Ray then leaves and heads to find out who he's really looking for, Innocent Zero, who he knows is hiding out in this school and is in disguise. He comes across Mash eating a cream puff, but doesn't know who he is and can sense his immense power levels. Suspicious, he takes out this magic spider that can detect power levels, but it tells Ray that this kid has no magic powers at all. Strange. But then he finds out from Mash's name that the headmaster did mention Mash to him and his potential. Ray apologizes and hands him a magic handkerchief as a gift and tells him that this thing can heal wounds. He tells Mash that he will soon meet his most horrifying opponent yet and that the top candidate to be the next divine visionary, Abel. Ray tells him that if he can beat him, he can inherit all of Abel's gold coins and he's got a whole lot of them. Having more important things to do, he wishes Mash good luck and they part ways. Mash continues to explore these dark hallways and discovers this door. Opening it, he sees Abel inside. Abel spots him and tells him that he's surprised Mash survived against Ray. Gaining respect for Mash, he tells him that the world cannot be fair, and the weak like those who cannot use magic must be exterminated. Mash is shocked and tells him that because Abel is so freaking mean, they probably can't be friends. And that's when Abel orders his magic
magic puppets to attack MASH. But that's when Love passes by outside and sees what's going on. Defeating this puppet, MASH is shocked to find his friend Finn approaching him. As a puppet, Abel tells MASH that if he tries anything, he will break Finn apart. Unable to harm Finn, MASH takes out his gold coin and flicks it at Finn's puppet strings, cutting them and setting him free. This pisses Abel off, and he traps MASH in puppet strings as well. But MASH goes into runner stance and fires off his developed glutes, heading straight for Abel and breaks his face in. Abel panics and uses a deadly spell. Marioness change instantly turning Mash into a doll. Now under his spell, Abel smiles and approaches him. He tries to take out Mash's gold coin, but that's when he accidentally takes out a cream puff instead. And that was his biggest mistake, causing a knee-jerk reaction in Mash, and he sticks out his hand to grab the cream puff and partially changes back into a human. Abel is shocked and says this is impossible since his puppet magic blocks signals to the brain. But Mash reveals that touching his most precious item in his jacket, the cream puff must have sent a spinal reflex through his body that overrided his brain. Abel suspects that this means hanging on to his cream puff must have been that important to him. Both amazed and pissed off, Abel reveals that he's collected enough magic in this machine from other wizards and other students, and now plans to channel it into his most terrifying spell, Marioness Second Death. Using all of their powers, he creates this giant puppet monster that can turn anything within its radius into puppets the moment its magical strings touches anyone. This monster attacks Mash, but easily breaks its arms off, shocking Abel. Mash tells him that in slow motion, he managed to tear off the strings of the puppet by bending his body in a certain way in order to delay contact with the rest of the strings. Once he felt the string on his left side before he lost control of his right side, he snapped that string before the others could reach him. Abel then gives up and says that Mash makes no sense at this point and he shoots Mash but Mash blocks him and sneaks up from behind, activating his muscle's magic Erector Spinae Magic Hellfall, and he slams Abel into the floor and swiftly defeats him. Now sad and somehow not dead from that ordeal, Abel tells him that his mother was a kind woman to everybody but was killed by a peasant years ago, and this is why he hates the weak and the poor. Mash forces him to release Lemon and everyone else that he has under his control, and the rest of Mash's teammates show up and cheer Mash on, and everybody gets happy, but then Lemon asks, where is Lance? Elsewhere, but he continues his search down this hallway, wherein he runs into Lance. But something is different. He can tell this guy doesn't belong in this school, and shoots a spell right at it, but gets deflected. Lance then transforms into the infamous Innocent Zero, and congratulates Ray for figuring him out, and reveals that his dark magic organization works within the shadows of this school and society. Ray asks him what is he doing here, but Innocent Zero tells him that him and his evil team forced Abel to search for something really important to them. But he couldn't find it. Because of this, he's come back to this school to kill Abel for being so freaking useless. Ray asks him what is he looking for, but Innocent Zero just tells him that he doesn't have time to fight, and calls upon his henchman and serial killer to fight Ray in a death match. Meanwhile, in the main room, Mash and his friends celebrate everything going back to normal, and Mash goes to the bathroom. But just then, Innocent Zero enters the room, knocking Mash's friends back, and approaches Abel, ready to kill him. He thanks him for giving him information about the Headmaster's whereabouts, and tells him that his service is no longer needed using his powerful magic. He forces Abel to choke himself, and tells him that he failed in finding one of the most powerful wizards he was searching for. Mash then suddenly enters back with a big old plate of cream puffs, but stares at the room, all confused. A fly sits on his nose causing him to sneeze and blow all of his cream puffs all over the place. Innocent Zero has no time for this and tries to kill him, but that's when he suddenly has a light headache and suspects Mash has something to do with it. Sensing his powers, he wonders if Mash was the one they're looking for this whole time. He tells Mash he'll kill him in just a sec and turns around to finish off murdering Abel, but Abyss quickly appears and blocks Abel from the lethal spell, losing blood quickly. Abyss apologizes to Mash that he won't be able to eat cream puffs with him, and Mash walks up to him and hands him this magical handkerchief and tells him to wipe himself with it, as it will heal him. Innocent Zero stands confused, and realizes that in a split second, Mash threw a pebble at his head when he fired his spell, and this caused his attack to not be fatal. Realizing his true potential, Innocent Zero finally understands that Mash isn't as weak as he looks, and Mash gets mad at the guy for harming his friends, and power stomps on the floor, kicking one of the flying rocks right at Innocent Zero, but he catches it and licks it like a freak. He tells Mash that Abyss only has minutes until he dies from blood loss, and tells Mash that he needs to hurry up and defeat him so he can save his friends. He fires devastating spells on Mash, forcing him to block at lightning speed, but it's no use, and he quickly gets injured. Abel watches and knows that this is one battle that Mash cannot win. He calls Abyss a fool for trying to save him, but Mash tells him that Abyss was alone all his life, and he was happy when Abel needed him, and blah 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 bunch of anime friendship type crap. Let's get back to the good stuff. Abel thinks of what to do as Mash does his best to defend him and his friends against Innocent Zero. Running out of power and strength, everybody watches his end come closer. Knowing what he must do, 
Abel creates a giant puppet spell around them and makes it attack Innocent Zero, but it quickly gets blown to pieces. And just then, Mash comes out of this puppet head, surprising Innocent Zero and beating his face in, breaking the armor around his body. And he's impressed by Mash's powers and asks him what his personal magic is. But Mash doesn't know what to say, and Innocent Zero thinks Mash won't tell him, and whips out his spellflection mirror, telling him that this thing reflects spells back to the magic user. But ha ha ha, Mash just face stomps him, breaking the mirror and his face. It's awesome. And everybody finally realizes that he doesn't have magic powers at all. Breaking through this reality, this giant hand comes in to take Innocent Zero away and reveals his real name is Cell War. How original. And he'll be seeing Mash again very soon. And he disappears, saving the day. Abel takes Abyss to the dock and thanks Mash. Mash's friends agree to keep Mash's secret a secret. But that's when this random student wakes up nearby and overhears everything. And he yells that he'll report him and expose them all. Then Mash has the panic munchies and proceeds to chow down on a protein cream puff to chill out, fueling his magic muscles and thinking about his next glorious workout set. But what did you think about the video? What would you do different? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to check out our How To Be playlist.